New Jersey Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Belvedere Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted with the Star Ledger and Express Times and submitted to the town clerk of the town of Belvedere on January 14th, 2021. Due to COVID-19, masks will be required at this meeting when proper social distancing cannot be maintained. Board members will be able to, to participate in the meeting virtually via conference call, and the meeting will be live streamed for members of the public that do not wish to attend in person. Public not in attendance can email comments to be read during public participation to rpjalma at belvedere.sd.org. Public comment on agenda items needs to be received by 7 p.m., and have public participation number one in the subject line. Public comment that is not related to agenda items needs to be received by 7.20 p.m. and have public participation number two in the subject line. Uh, I also need a motion, uh, a motion and a second pursuant to bylaw 9310 to suspend certain meeting procedures as described in the notice of meeting, specifically to authorize board members to participate in the meeting virtually via conference call if desired. I get a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, it's time for the flag salute. Are all in favor? Sorry. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay, shall you want to do roll call? Um, Here. Trustee Pino. Here. Duckworth. Barr. Here. Bell. Scott. Here. Stephan. Here. Ty. Williams. Here. Dwight. Here. Okay. Uh, so we're at the part where we're going to go. The part of the meeting where we're going to do public participation. Anybody from the audience have anything? No. Del, do you have anything? Responding, thank you. Can you hear me? Dear Mr. Karuba, Superintendent of Schools, and Rochelle Trauma, Business Administrator, it has been a privilege and a pleasure to have worked in Belvedere for the past 22 years. This community embraced me, and I am truly grateful that I had this opportunity to teach so many wonderful children. I have worked for 25 years in New Jersey. Therefore, I've decided to submit my intent to retire from Belvedere as of July 1, 2021, pending the written confirmation from the New Jersey Pension Department. I will miss the children very much, as well as my colleagues who supported me every day. I am ready to spend more time with my grandchildren and family. I will submit a formal letter once I get the pension confirmation, which is critical for me to receive medical benefits. I'm sorry, and that's from Stephanie Warbeck. Do you have any public participation then? Oh, no. No? Nothing. Okay, so we're going to close public participation. Now we'll resume with correspondence. To the Belvedere Board of Education, the past 25 years working as an instructional aide for the Belvedere School has been an honor and a privilege. The children I have worked with in those years have brought joy to my life that no words can describe. After all these years, I have decided to submit my intent to retire, effective July 1, 2021, pending the written confirmation from the New Jersey Pension Department. I will submit a formal letter once I receive my pension confirmation and medical benefit confirmation, which is critical for my retirement. Sincerely, Lisa Cundiff. The third one is Dear Mr. Karuba, please accept this letter as formal notification that I am resigning from my position as administrative assistant to the principal. My last day will be June 30th, 2021. Thank you so much for the opportunity to work in this position for the past nine years. I have greatly enjoyed working here at Belvedere High School. I'll do everything possible to wrap up my duties for the year end. Please let me know if there's anything else I can do to help during this transition. Sincerely, Joanne Iorio. And I must spoke again. I do have public participation. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Belvedere Board of Education. It has been brought to our attention that our son's personal aid will be reduced to 65% next year, resulting in two different aides working with our son during his school day. It is very important to our son's educational development that he remains with Ms. Byrne next year for the full day. It concerns us very much to have another aide with him who does not understand him and his unique needs. Our son is autistic, nonverbal, and has behavioral issues. Ms. Byrne has been with Jack for the last four years and has made great, great progress and created a trusting bond and relationship with him. She understands his specific behaviors unique to him and his disability. Ms. Byrne understands what he needs and communicates with him at his level. Jack has come a long way, and, and we believe that Ms. Byrne is important to his daily routine. Jack requires consistency at all times. We are very concerned about him having half his day with another aide that does not have experience with Jack. As a parent with a special needs child, I trust his staff to care for him, guide him, and educate him. If you speak with any of them, they can shed light on the necessity for my son to continue in this trusted relationship as they know Jack's needs very well. I feel my voice and concerns have not been heard or dealt with properly. I understand my son requires more than most students, but my son is entitled to a proper and safe education. Please consider Jack's needs as you make this decision tonight. Sincerely, the Kinneys. Thanks, Shell. Is that all? Okay, so that was public participation is done and all correspondence is done. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go to uh, executive session before we continue on with our meeting. It is hereby resolved that the board will now go into private session to discuss HIV, litigation. Was that it? Yeah, HIV and litigation. Um, any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential will be made public as soon as practicable. Minutes of the private session will not be disclosed until the need for confidentiality no longer exists. The board will now reconvene in public, the board will reconvene in public session at the conclusion of the closed session and obviously will take action because we have an entire agenda to do. Okay, and it's matters of attorney-client privilege as well. So can I get a motion and a second for executive session? Motion. Second. We have is the, um, our annual budget presentation. I just got to pull it up, so going to have um, Chris and Ed and, and Jess will come up and work with Shelly and I. So Shelly, I don't know if you want to take a minute and just give a little overview while I pull it up, pull up the presentation. Okay, I did share this with everyone. It was in the packet um, over the weekend, so hopefully everybody had a chance to take a look at it. And if you have any questions, let us know. Um, so as you can see, this is our proposed budget. We have been through it. Um, I'd like to compliment the Finance Committee. I think we did a, a very efficient job on getting this done. Um, we met quite a bit just to go through everything, um, and we're happy to propose a budget again this year with no tax increase to the Belvedere taxpayers. Um, as, you, as you can see, and I won't read every number where we are, but our projected numbers, um, so again, that's 30 for pre-K all the way down. Um, some of our numbers are, are picking up down here. Uh, second grade is our one small grade. And then um, you can see the 254 students projected next year for the Oxford Elementary School, uh, or Bel I'm sorry, Belvedere Elementary School. I keep doing that. And then you can see 380 students for the high school, which is pretty flat from last year to this upcoming year. So it's good to, good to see that, and you can see where the, the numbers are. Talk a little bit about the funds. So the total, can you hear me? The total budget for 21-22 that we're proposing is $12,040,721. 
which is a $15,000 increase over the budget from this current year. Uh, that equates to a 0.13% increase. So the total budget is, is fairly flat. Um, and that's the general fund. The special revenue fund, that's where we have our different grants, federal and state money. Um, so it's the ESSA, the IDEA grants, and that's where our preschool program is included. That um, goes down 18798 this year. Uh, primarily because of preschool, um, the very first year, you get a little more startup costs. So um, now as the years progress, we'll be getting a little less each time for that. The revenue that we use to support the school district is um, primarily from the sending district tuition. Um, that's four point, almost $4.4 .4 million that we get from Hope, White, and Harmony. Um, the next amount is the local tax levy from Belvedere, which is $3,854,525. That is the exact same amount as last year. No tax increase included in this budget. Um, the next large amount we have is our state aid, uh, a little over $3 million. We have a small amount of miscellaneous funds, which is our game receipts um, and interest. Fund balance is funds from this current year's budget, 2021, that we plan to carry over into the 21-22 budget. Because we do that every year, we pretty much lock ourselves into a cycle of needing to do that every year, otherwise you will have that gap in your revenue sources. And the last one here is uh, money from our maintenance reserve. So we're pulling $500,000 out of maintenance reserve and pulling that forward to support all our maintenance costs for next year. Um, so as we mentioned a couple times, we have a zero percent, zero dollar increase in our local tax levy. We could have increased our taxes up to two percent, and we also have banked cap available. That's money that we didn't utilize in the the previous three years that we could have added into this budget. That we equated to two hundred and forty-one thousand plus dollars, which is almost a nineteen cent increase. We could have gone up in taxes, but the board of um, believes very firmly in trying to keep the taxes for the town of Belvedere as low as possible, so we try not to have any type of increase. The tax rate proposed is $3.037 out of each $100 of rateable. This year's state aid uh, decreases just a little bit, $3,669 from where we were last year at budget time. Our tuition from our sending districts increases this year, a little over $44,000. That tuition number is made up of several different components. Um, we have a $50,700 increase due to the number of budgeted Belvedere High School students coming from the sending districts going up three kids. Um, that goes from 246 students budgeted last year to 249 being budgeted for 21-22. The 124500 is an increase from the actual tuition rate. We have a tuition rate this year of 16900 and the 2122 rate was set by meeting with the sending districts, the Hope and White um, superintendents, or I'm sorry, their CSAs and their business administrators, as well as with Harmony and Belvedere. Uh, we actually were proposing a, a lower rate, but they were interested in going a little higher because they want to see us improve things in the high school, uh, improve our facilities and, and improve the, um, the providings that we have for their students. So we decided to settle on a tuition rate of 17400 Now every year we do a two-year true up um, where we look at what the actual tuition rate was for a year and the actual number of students that got sent that year and then we either give back money or the other districts have to pay money, so that way you're right on your actual amount. Um, so that tuition adjustment this year went down $157,000. We also bill the Senate districts for a resource program, so that's our resource room teachers, basically, and some supplies, and then they get divided over the sending districts based upon the projected usage that we have for the special education kids from each school. And that number goes down $8,000 this year, primarily because Belvedere uses more of the, of the uh, program than the other schools. 
And we did have a tuition increase this year of $35,000 because we started a behavioral disabilities class this year, and next year we have our first projected tuition student coming into that program. So that's $35,000 just for uh, one student. Um, as you can see, you know, we do have uh, just a couple of minor personnel changes. Um, uh, we are proposing increased 50% speech teacher to 100%. Um, as we've talked about in committee, um, we have uh, had we struggled to get a 50% teach, uh, speech teacher. Um, so we're hoping by pushing that to 100% that we can pull someone in uh, so that will give us three speech teachers and help us um, kind of get caught up and make sure that all the IEPs are being followed. Uh, we are proposing... Um, the decrease of the one full-time personal aid. We are adding one full-time behavior disabilities classroom aid, and we are um, recommending that the BES, the elementary school art teacher, increase to 100% if it is feasible. Okay, I'm gonna have um, Dr. Lazar and Mr. Carabinich just come up and talk real quick about the curriculum upgrades in each of their schools. So we'll start with Dr. Lazar. So at the high school, We've created new uh, elective courses for the history department. So uh, AP, European history, modern society and sociology, modern world history through entertainment, modern American history through entertainment, and political opinion participation in the US. We've also added an adulting course. Uh, Mrs. Koch will be teaching that course. And that's to provide our, our upperclassmen with the very many skills that they will need uh, once they transition out of high school. And then our elective pathways also began this year. So computer programming and design, which would include robotics, uh, Java, website design, app development, video game design, AP computer science, the social media marketing and broadcasting journalism track with uh, video production, communication, and mass media, pop culture, social media marketing, digital media, and, and publication design. So you guys have seen a lot of that. Uh, through the uh, Week in Review, through the Cedar Troop, through the uh, campus tour that we did, the campus visit, and those types of things that those, those students are working on. Uh, engineering, so intro to engineering, sustainable engineering, computer-aided drafting, architecture and design, and then economics and finance. So intro to economics, society, entre entrepreneurship, entertainment, sports management, tactics, and hospitality on tourism and society. And then we do have a couple other things that we actually were talking about tonight. So uh, to add on to our freshman seminar course, we are, we're going to add advanced seminar one, advanced seminar two uh, to our upperclassmen. So that kind of doesn't uh, fizzle after freshman year. And we're we're going to create some different options uh, through that and, and hopefully uh, develop partnerships with the community and continue to uh, expand our uh, electives. All yours, Mr. Carabinus. Real quick. Real quick. Did I get it already? <laughs> okay, the curriculum upgrades at BES. First, we're going to start with like a three year cycle for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade with study skills, engineering, and uh, personal finance in eighth grade. New elective offerings are cybersecurity, CAD 1 and 2. These are true electives that students will sign up for, which will be pass fail. Space and science, government, number theory, digital photography, earth, and creative programming. A um, couple of spaces we are going to be changing and altering up this year just to transition some of our students from virtual to in-person and some so, so SEL is social emotional learning support for our students. We're going to transition two spaces into alternate learning space, social emotion learning environments. With the extension of, with the hope expansion of our art program, we have our elective that we're going to add an art because one of the two big areas that we missed out a lot on during COVID is art and music. So we want to try to upgrade them and put as much of that into the curriculum as possible. And the potential offerings are ceramics and pottery, three-dimensional design, two-dimensional design, art and community, art history, and craft and textiles. And we're also bringing a, a 21st century career exploration program into the elementary school, which will explore specific careers, workshops with professionals, and Leadership. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 
Before I turn it over to Ms. McKinney, I just want to comment on uh, both Dr. Lazar and Mr. Carabin has talked a little bit about uh, career, career exploration and some of the programs. Uh, obviously, for those of you that have been on the curriculum committee, got a, we had a presentation just this evening on the high school version of that, and then um, two weeks ago we, we presented from the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade point of view. Number one, I want to you know thank the curriculum committee. I think it's been a very interesting and, and productive discussion, um, and really has helped us sort of mold where that program is going to go. Uh, and then second, for the rest of the board, I'll be putting those the handouts and uh, attaching a video to the weekly update. Um, which I probably won't do one this week because we're going to be basically Friday, but for next week, so it'll be a pretty uh, robust weekly update. So look forward to that, um, and then we'll have more of that. We'll probably do a presentation at the May meeting for the overall. McKinney. Thank you. So I've done presentations on LinkIt already, but just as a reminder, we are actually going into our final LinkIt assessment uh, next week. So that'll be nice to see now that we've gone through the whole year what the results will end up looking like and what changes we might need to make as we move forward, uh, having one year now under our belt. We've been working really closely with the, the gentlemen over at Lincoln and they're really supportive in providing us with a lot of information on a regular basis. So we have a meeting set up uh, May 19th to talk about ending this year and moving forward with next year, especially given the fact that we're gonna have to do fall assessments so the NJSLA is not happening this spring, but they are going to do the Start Strong assessment in the fall. To, so we're going to kind of see what we can work with Linkit, um, you know, as we move forward with these additional assessments that we have to do. And then obviously this year, uh, due to COVID and having a lot of kids, both hybrid and virtual, uh, we have obviously increased our use of technology programs. So these are just some to name a few. There are a whole lot more that I wasn't going to list on here. Uh, but the teachers have used them to supplement their classroom instruction. And I know that I've been speaking with teachers over the last few weeks, and they are looking forward to getting the kids back in the classroom and not having to rely on technology as much as they've had to this year. So it's nice to hear that they do want to go back to what we normally see in a classroom, but that they still want to use these resources to supplement their instruction, which was awesome to hear. This um, pie chart just shows you how our appropriations are, the different expenses that are part of the 21-22 budget are broken out. Um, it stays fairly much the same each year. Um, our biggest cost is our regular education. That's 35% of our cost. Um, the next cost is um, employee benefits. 20% of our cost, so right there is over 55% fixed cost that we have each year. Um, special education is 12%, operations and maintenance 13%, administration is roughly 10%, and then the support services and extracurricular come in at 5%. This is a, a trend that we put up last year in the budget presentation, so we thought we would continue it on this year. Um, it shows you what the tax levy was for the last 11 years. Um, as well as what our general fund um, cost has been and then what that change is. Um, if you notice on here, six out of 11 years, um, we did not go to cap. Um, and in fact, five of those 11 years, we had 0% or a decrease <coughs> in taxes. Um, which, if you probably looked countywide, is fairly unusual. Most people do go um, to their cap or more, so having this extra bank cap that I discussed earlier and, and not increasing your tax levy is, is more unusual. And actually, Chris and I have to explain it to the county every year in our mid-year mid review. Why aren't you increasing to 2%? Um, so, you know, we, we do hear that the town, um, you know, needs us to be fiscally responsible, and that's what we try to do. And then just a few pictures we added in there uh, this year. Everybody can kind of see this is why we do what we do. Um, and I will say that this was a different year, as, we, as everybody knows, in trying to put the budget together with the anticipation that we will be back to uh, as normal as we can next year, um, which we're hoping will be the case. Obviously, um, at this point, the governor says he expects everybody to be in full time next year. Um, and he has not really backed off of that too much, just to touch with maybe some of the remote learning for those that um, have medical issues about coming to school. So um, I know 
I can speak for the administrative team. We're excited to start to plan for next year where we're going to be in a more normal setting. You know, this time last year, if you recall, we were doing this meeting virtual and had no idea where and when we would ever return to being in person. So um, it certainly hasn't been smooth the whole way, but um, I do think we're on the right track, and I, I just want to thank everybody for their support and if there's any questions. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? I have just one. Um, under personnel, we're showing an addition of a full-time BD aide. Is that a full-time aide, which we decided not to hire, or is it two part-time aides filling a full-time slot? I thought we were kind of leaning towards not hiring full-time aides anymore, going with two part-times instead. <clears throat> I couldn't hear you. The we had that parent request that we discussed that uh, about this specific aid. This is for the BD room. Add one full time BD aid. Chris, BD aid. Do you remember? The, the BD aid was to make sure we could market our MD program to continue to bring um, tuition to. Again, is it one full time aid or is it two part time aids? One full time aid. And I thought we had decided we were not going to go with full time aids any longer. We were going to only hire part time aids. Is confused by. A parent request in between. So, so the, the budget the, was not the, updated tonight to reflect the, the personnel budget, meeting the other night. The budget has gone through the county and been reviewed as the preliminary. Mm -hmm. This is how the budget was prepared. How the board decides to hire is is separate, and that's where the for the other discussion comes in. Okay. You okay. So that means it goes back to curriculum. It goes back to curriculum. What are we voting on tonight? Decreasing of full-time personal aid? You're voting on the budget as, as presented. We're voting right. in the budget. We're mm -hmm. voting on that. But there is personnel items in here that affects that Correct. decrease one full-time personal aid. Correct. So and those yeah. are shown from the discussions that we had in the personnel. That was not in the notes. My on. I'll get to that point. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize everybody was looking at me. <laughs> what, what what are we waiting on? Any I other questions? I was waiting for you to see if you were done. Oh, um, no, I still don't understand. We're we're voting on the budget, and then we're going to wait and see personnel, and then the budget can get amended for the next board meeting. It has nothing to do with the budget. We're voting on the budget as it is, basically the, the bottom dollar line. Yes. Those personnel things can be taken up. So right now, we don't have the actual need for the BD full-time aid. We can anticipate that with the growing of the program, which, which we discussed in all the committees. Thus, we can discuss in curriculum whether it's a full-time person or it's a half-time person. It has nothing to do with the folks that are on the personnel agenda. What about the personal aid? That's on the agenda to be cut, correct? So if they don't, if people don't want to cut the personal aid, we need to explain to them what item that it would be. Okay, got that. So my understanding of us voting on the budget is that we are voting in a proposed amount that we are planning on using in this guideline, but yet it can be changed to the needs that we have as we go on, right? Because we had this discussion last year when there was differences. Correct. Right, there's some overlap between committees, too. Correct. Okay, any other questions for Chris or Jess or Shelly or anybody? Okay. <clears throat> so, does that conclude your superintendent's report?
All right, so now we'll move on to agenda items. Um, we have some additions and changes and add-ons. So we're looking at personnel items 1 through 12A. Yes, 1 through 12A. Can I get a motion in a second for agenda items 1 through 12A? I'll take. Motion, second? Second. Okay, questions, comments? I'll, I'll try to address the questions that came up now. Okay. Give me one second. My computer is just starting up. I want to make sure I get the right numbers. While you're doing that, there is one thing I want to say. We didn't get a chance to say it during... Um, correspondence and we quickly went into executive session but there are two teachers or two uh, staff members on here that both have 25 years of service in the district and they will be sorely missed I think we should just you know thank them for their service and wish them well in their retirement thank you sorry I'm having technical difficulties at the you moment. need an agenda I do need an agenda Okay. So for item number 10. Thank you. For item number 10, we would be proposing as for the discussion that we took that took place in personnel to increase Terry Byrne to 100%. Uh, yes. But okay. I'd also like to add that we never talked about or agreed upon not having full-time aides. Again, that's not a personnel discussion. That was a curriculum discussion. Uh, but it affects number 10 directly. So I'm not sure what you're saying. Oh, well, no, it, to make ch we discussed that last year, and that's what we put Correct. in. Correct. So that's, I and guess. And it was a big issue then, too. So that's why I'm confused as to why it wasn't discussed before. Being. I think I'm confused because I was on curriculum last year too and I remember the conversation and I know why we had to pull back on the aids because of COVID. We're now going into what you say is going to be, we all hope, a normal school year. So going into 21-22, I think you might be saying, Danielle, why oh, are we why, why are why we, are we still cutting them? A COVID year to start off with another year um, where the There's students more who need it the most have have suffered greatly because of this and uh, how could we start off a full day next year where they're not going to have their aid that they need and I, I don't know why we wouldn't have discussed that first. when we had this conversation as I recall last year we not, uh, wait, wait wait just hang on hang on, hang on. we agreed to keep a few aides full-time with the union knowing that they were all going to go to 60 percent after that and we kept, we're, key, we're still keeping four aides 100%. Maybe five. Or eight. It would be five, including Or Perry five, Byrne. sorry. Yeah, we're, st we're still keeping five. So we're actually above and beyond what we agreed to. And that was in what committee that was agreed to? No, that was with the union. We agreed to that as a board. That was a sidebar agreement. That was, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah the this, board agreed that to that. That was during a no, board, board meeting. Well, yeah, that, that was during a board meeting. Right, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. board agreed to that. Well, we, we voted I, on that during a board meeting. Right, for this school year. But I thought we were talking about for next school year. What we're no, we doing. voted to change. We, we voted to change the um, the how we how we have our aids. So that, all that of this is accurate according to how we voted. If you want to go back to putting someone more at a hundred percent, then we need to bring that aid up, like we're bringing this. Correct. It was addressed was as a, it was addressed as a COVID related. I said I voted no. To just to be clear, from right. the beginning, and, 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 but, I, and I remember the discussion. But it was it was it was clearly addressed as a COVID issue because they were not in the school district at the time. And you're correct in saying that that we felt that during COVID we wouldn't need them and that we would discuss it further. But we were cutting the aids at that time. We need yes. to bring up the old. Um, we have to bring up the old minutes. The old minutes and look yes. at. Yes, <clears throat> but I I remember exactly what you're saying. I remember them meeting as well. But again, we all were under the terms of COVID. Uh, I didn't hear it that way. I yeah, I, I didn't hear it that I way either. I heard that we were cutting the aids, and that we would address it later if we needed them after COVID. 
Uh -huh. Okay, but I, I think that's what's missing. I don't think we've ever addressed it or discussed it again, and we're moving into it. It's the end of April, moving into a new school year. I think that's the one missing piece. Is there, can I, could we table this? I don't think we can because it's time sensitive, correct? We have to let them know by the uh, May 15th what their um, positions are for next year. Um, I will comment on this. Keep in mind, I think we, there would only be maybe two at this point that would actually be removed, we put back to full time. If I'm right, Chris, there was most, quite a few of these aides were part time anyway. Um, I'm just trying to look real quick. I think, and we can talk openly because everybody's been rice, by the way. Let's mm -hmm. remember that. I think Tracy Berezny was one that was full time. There's three. Can you just, Berezny one? Yeah, because Burns going. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so it would be Berezny and Crane Ants would be the other two that were full time, not down to 65%. Only two more. Was there an issue though with um, if Terry Byrne came back to full time that she was actually lower on the totem pole than somebody else or somebody else had to come back full time? Maureen Burns is already full time and she is senior to Terry Byrne. Okay. So, yes. So, there's no issue there. If we go to 100%. If we went to 100%, we'd be keeping Maureen Burns at 100%. And we'd be keeping Terry Byrne at 100%. Well, we'd be pushing Terry back to 100%. Shouldn't say keeping. I mean, I did interpret it as COVID related. I thought that's what it was too. Um, and then I thought when we went to back to full time, which I was hoping we would do this year, um, then they were going to go back to full time. I guess then once they would have gone back to full time at that point, it would have rolled into full time into next year. We never went back to full time this year. Um, so that's, I think that's what's creating a little bit of an issue mm -hmm. here. I feel we've gotten, gotten off the main point of approving the budget. I, I kind of feel like we're stuck in the weeds here. No, now no, we're approving aid. We are, we are definitely not. We're yeah. talking about we personnel. We're Bob, stuck in the weeds. no, Bob, we're on <laughs> line item 10. No, come out, come out. Oh. We cannot it's vote on number 10 unless we know what we're voting for. And that's okay. what we're talking about. I, I retract my comment. <laughs> I think I'm with Danielle. If we can table it, I don't think we can because we're, it's time sensitive. They have to get rehired by May 15th, and we don't have a board meeting between now and May 15th. I mean, we can make, someone can uh, make a motion to amend the motion to include those two at 100 percent, or people can vote to make them 100 percent, right? Yeah. Well, we could hire. I mean, as it is now or whatever modifications and we can always increase somebody in the future um, once we figure out how we would accommodate that. Hire as is now, go back to committee, discuss it, and then amend it at the next board meeting. If it's determined that we need additional full time aides to Yeah, no, I don't I'm not sure I agree to that. But uh, is there just a way giving to, an option. Is there a way to go back to pre change in COVID that we had? So could we agree that these aides would go back to the percentage that they were prior to that change? Well, you could vote on that tonight. That we can agree to that, but we have to. I don't know what. Then we have to about. make changes somewhere else to accommodate the cost. Miriam, my my concern is that we voted to go one way. We no. can't change that vote unless we change this whole amendment. Well, then That's we, not, I think maybe we, we should voted, leave it. We can change that if we vote against it. Right. If you vote against it, I think that right. we need to. Take take a, a vote and see where it goes. And if it's not before the fifteenth, then we're going to have to meet again. To, to, right. To do that because we can't change that vote unless we change the vote. Unless we change the vote, right? We could yeah. vote it as is, meet in committee, and if we choose to change it at the next meeting, change it. They would be rehired at their lower rates, and they could be increased at the end of May meeting. We could. You still have the option to vote no if you don't right. like we what could, they said. Right. You could vote no tonight, but I don't think that would change. Would that, would that change them to 100 percent, or would that just be a no vote? No, that would no, be a no have, vote against it. We'd have no aids. Right. We'd have no aids. You would have no aids. Well, that's, right. That's but, not true. Right, which is why I, I was 
hoping to table it because obviously yeah. I don't want to say no to not have any aid. Yeah. But the way this is going down, I don't. I also don't feel comfortable saying yeah. Okay. I did do research on what we had said before and looked at the sidebar today because I did receive an email. Um, so I did pull all that out. So what the board voted on previously was to decrease aids to 65% and only four of them be full-time. That was for the remainder of the 2021 school year. Correct. And if we did go back to full-time, that those aids would be um, returned to their 100% positions this year only. It did not have any impact on 21-22. The 21-22 budget, however, has been discussed, distributed, I'm gonna say at least four or five meetings of time and finance. In finance and, and given out to the board. Um, we got it on Friday. Hmm? Yeah, we just got it this weekend. No, 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 no. I know I sent it to the entire board budget. before the preliminary. Copy it's, of the budget they got back in March. Oh, but it doesn't show any. This it has yes, every it single person listed yeah, with the percentage times um, oh, individually. Know. It does. I just don't think we knew if we were going full time or not. Yeah, but no, the, the budget's been done in, as if we were going full time the entire process. So it, this isn't really like a bombshell. It's just a, it's a discussion point. And I think, I mean, more of our preparation today was that the way it's budgeted, because if there's discussion, because of a request to bring another person up to full time, because of seniority, we have to keep a, another aid full time that was not budgeted that way and cannot be used to do certifications in the needs that we need, that we really have too many aids on this agenda right now for what our required needs are. So, and I can explain that better. Just so if there's a, right now we have a parent request to maintain a specific aid at full time. Because that person um, is lower on the seniority list than another, we would still need to keep that other person at 100%, even though they're not budgeted that way. We actually had that position cut to reduce a full time aid. Um, so we would be keeping an additional 100% person beyond what our needs are in order to maintain that one-to-one -one relationship for that one specific student. Um, so really what, here lay financial side, I would say, is then we need to take the two 60% or 65% aides that are on the bottom of the seniority, we would need to cut those tonight because otherwise we're hiring more aid power than we need right this second. Right, we're going by what the IEPs are written and what we're told we need for scheduling the students. So that's where we kind of have to look. It's not just about what people and wanting to give them certain percentage time jobs. It's what our needs are for the aides in the school. So if we hire all these aides tonight and it turns out... If we just change one more to 100%, we're hiring two, more, two extra aides that which should be, have not yeah. been detailed out as necessary. And now the schedules are not complete yet at this time. So it was discussed within administration today that when the schedules did completely get determined, if we had an additional need at that time, we could hire those two aides back, the part-timers, but that at this time, we're, we're hiring more than our needs. So did we have more than we needed pre-COVID that, That's what that's I was just going to ask. Like, are we losing students that we... I mean, yeah. yeah I don't like, um, have our yes, needs changed we had that much? Pre-COVID, part of our situation is we had a student who had a full-time personal aid at a district that no longer does. Okay, um, there's changes the consistent. So that's a 100% person that we don't need to cover. And that's why you see it reduced in the budget at budget time. And now that's a position that we would have to add back in order to keep the consistency per the request. So now you're having 100% more time person additional, so we don't need then two part-time people. I mean, our, our needs change constantly, I believe. I mean, I'm literally am not the expert on that. I'm just, you know, and we were asked the question in finance, what are your aides needs? Why are we hiring this? You know, what are we doing? Um, that's my best, best explanation of, you know, how we got from point A to point B. So as far as seniority for AIDS, is that a district rule or a state rule? It's by contract. Contractual rule? Contractual okay. rule. So we have a, you know, we could just hire the personal aid that has a seniority and assign that person full day, you know, to the student request. But, you know, then we're not 100% providing what has been asked of us or asked of the board, you know, to have a specific person. 
And that's where the board has to look and decide, you know, what, what you want to grant. Um, if this person was three down on the seniority list and we had to hire three other people ahead of them, it may change, you know, the scenario a little bit. But in this case, we could accommodate by taking the two part-time off the bottom of the seniority list. How do you want to proceed? That's a good question that I don't have a good answer to. We do have two Wednesday nights between now and the 15th. If we want to take this out and then schedule a special meeting, a board meeting, just to vote on this. <clears throat> but we are short order of time. I mean, I, I, think it's, I think it's worth it at this point. Well, I do too, because I think it's an issue of, of personnel, finance, and curriculum all mixed together. I think these little conversations happen all over the place, and this is why, you know, we can't always fill in the pieces. I know we do the notes. People miss things. I think that the, a special meeting would bring us all together so we can hash out this one topic that does keep coming up. All right, what's the majority of the board want to do? Bob, I'm going to go around for a straw poll because I need to find out. Bypass it. Doug? I'm fine with a special meeting. Okay. We know you want a special meeting. You want a special meeting? Michelle, or Melissa, I'm sorry. Special meeting is fine with me. Special meeting. Ted? I would be willing to vote on it. I agree. I want to vote. Vote as is. Vote as is. Brian, is Brian here? Hey, Brian. Vote as is. Vote as is. One, two, three, four, five, two, six. Five for six, right? Bob did not vote. So bypass. Special meeting. Okay, so we're going to do a special meeting. So are we doing it on the 5th or the 12th? 12th. No, I, I thought I just checked. Hold on. I could be wrong. Your meeting, your one you're talking about is the fourth. We have we have curriculum and finance will be scheduled on the twelfth. So I don't know if it makes it easier to. And we have personnel the week before, so. No, we move personnel. Remember, we decided not oh, to meet right. until June. A little more time to get it in the paper. Okay, so we'll do the twelfth. So we're going to table item 10 for tonight. And you're going to have to figure out how to schedule some committee meetings between now and 12. It would also give the principals a little time to talk more about their proposed schedules. They would know how that would fit in. Yes. <clears throat> okay, so that takes care of item 10. Any other questions or comments on where are we at? 1 through 12A, with the exception of 10. Uh, to accept the resignation of Jody Iorio, Administrative Assistant, effective June 30th, 2021. Okay, we can vote. Shall roll call? Mr. Blum? Yes. Mrs. Costantino? I forgot. I just forgot the Everything but 10. Uh, yeah, about... I still don't understand a few things. No, oh, I asked you if I had any questions. No questions. I know, I'm sorry. I was still figuring out where I was. I'm sorry. Uh, can I ask a question about number five real quick? Go ahead. There's a 60% mark where on the budget. I think this is another question for the discrepancy. Is it going to be 100% or 60%? We're proposing a 60% right now. If we have to hire full-time aides, it's going to say 60%. Um, and then the other question I have is, this is similar to last year again. I still don't understand. I thought we had shown, I can find it now. Looking at number seven. Tenured staff? Yes. 
that the one is still at a reduced rate, the only one, when I thought there was plenty of time that we needed both pieces? Yeah. And right now, we, we feel that we are comfortable with everyone will reach their 150 minutes with her at 60 percent. Actually, more than 150 minutes. I believe it's like they're going to have 180 minutes of phys ed next year per student. And that's covered? Between uh, Mr. Dempsey full-time and Ms. White at 60 percent. So I am I'm just going to vote the same as I did last time. Three grades of phys ed. Correct. I am, I guess I have to say no to seven and no to ten. Or no, we're not voting on ten. Not voting ten. Not voting ten. So you can say no to seven. Mm -hmm. You're saying no to everyone on seven? I don't know. I don't remember how I did it last year. Did the same thing, though. You vote no, you just a straight no. no votes no for all those people being in their spot. I say yes to everything except for the one. Okay. <coughs> Dr. Zucker? Yes. Mr. Duckworth? Yes. Mr. Labar? Uh, yes to all, abstain seven, Beth Francisino, and 11, Beth Francisino. Kyle? Yes, no to number seven. Sorry, seven, no to 11. Just club, could I be the vice president? So, yes to all except chess club number 11? Yes. Okay. Scott? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Steffen? Yes. Mr. Tai? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Could you speak into the microphone? So I'm sorry. I'm, okay. I'm abstaining from num from number six, and I am voting yes on everything. Mr. White, abstain on six. Yes on all others. Okay. So now we're looking at education items. We have an add on there as well, or change to number thirteen. And an add-on of 14 field trips. So we're looking at 13 through 15. I got a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Questions or comments? Yeah, I have a question. We discussed a field trip for kindergarten, but I don't think we got that in time to put on the agenda, right? Close. Close, yeah. Um, when's the next board meeting? May, May 12th. May 12th, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, great. Any other questions or Just comments? We're, we're, we're okay with a, a field trip to New York to the galleries, but we're not okay with our seniors bringing dates to the prom from outside school. That, that doesn't make much so sense. So do you have a me. question or is that just a comment? It's a question. Are we okay with Sending our kids to the galleries in New York, but we're not okay with local local kids coming to a senior prom. Again, what's the question? Well, it's two okay. different issues. The prom is a different issue than it the New York It wasn't a trip. question. It was a statement. That's what I thought. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> any any questions or comments? Is the high school trip? Senior trip is not on here yet. We have not confirmed the date, so but okay. it'll be on. Well, now we can put it on for May twelfth. Okay, and that's not going to be an overnight then. It is not. Looking at a day trip to Hershey Park. Eighth grade trip, what are they doing? 
we approved that quite a while ago. They're, they're going to, I'm going to say it wrong. I always say the wrong name, but I call it the Rocking Horse Ranch. Yeah, yeah. It, but they're going overnight, right? Correct. Traders go overnight. If our eighth graders are going overnight. Because we haven't really had a lot of time to raise any money for them. Well, they haven't had enough time to raise any money, so. Because there's a camping site. They could go camping. There's a camping site at Hershey. It's not that expensive. They could probably stay over at the camping site. I don't have a kid who's a senior, but I am just feel bad that the seniors aren't having a night out and, and, and the eighth graders are. Okay. It's just a suggestion. All right, any other comments or questions? Getting daggers over uh, <laughs> trying to just get our seniors a night out. You have young children. Yeah. I will say this. I will, I, I, will, I, will, I will get on my soapbox now because I need to a little bit. Um, I take it very personal when people talk about what we do and what we don't do for the seniors. There's a father of a senior who's getting to do literally nothing this year. Um, I think we've really gone above and beyond. I understand that some parents are upset that we're not allowing outside students to the prom, um, but I don't want to be the superintendent that has to move graduation because we had an outside student bring COVID into our prom and we have to quarantine everybody. Um, there's five, six high schools in this county, five of which are following the same guidelines which are set by the county health department where they're not allowing dates. One high school is not even having a prom. Um, so I think we're doing a really good job. So I apologize I'm shooting daggers at you, but I'm just a little, it's a little touchy I'm for me. I'm just asking for yep. some camping at Hershey, at, at Hershey. I didn't say anything about the prom or anything else yeah, like no. that. That's why I didn't really. I apologize. I'm getting on my soapbox for it. Just yeah, no. I'm just. I'm trying to. Get, I'm just asking. If you're, I, I, I don't think we should know. take them to Disney. Let's go. They Can also go have um, project graduation. So. Right. And that's overnight. Possibly. <laughs> I, I just looked at it. From eighth graders are staying overnight. Seniors aren't. I'm sorry. I asked the question. But we, that's kind of micromanaging, and that's not what we do as a board. So I, can I just throw that out there? That would be the senior. <laughs> Wait, oh hang on. Senior, that's not micromanaging at all. It was just you a suggestion. You saying that you want a senior a, class to have a class trip is micromanaging. It was they an come honest, to us and ask us nice if they want suggestion. A class trip. <clears throat> I don't even have a senior. All right. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Business. We're on to business section now. Um, item, uh, agenda item 16 through 23, and just a note, 21 is the budget vote. 25. So through 25. Or 25, through 25, sorry, and uh, item 21 is the budget vote. And we're going to table 17. Well, hold on. We're going to table 17, but I do have something for the, to pass out to the board, um, and it has to do with the person and the proposed donation, which is why I'm asking for item... 17 to be tabled. Um, it's a record of his conviction from the SEC and his fines and his um, restitution he needs to pay back. So I can't even, in my mind, I cannot entertain accepting a donation from somebody, A, until they can at least prove that they've satisfied their debt to society. <clears throat> but that's my opinion, and everybody needs to come to their own opinion. So this is a copy of the SEC. The articles, the two articles, one is an explanation of the SEC article and one is the actual SEC publication where they found him guilty of a Ponzi scheme. So everybody's going to have to make their own decision and you can do your own research. So we're going to table this for next time. Was he a student here? He was, was. a student here. He graduated with, uh, in 2011, which is my daughter, as yeah, a matter of fact. <clears throat> he had a son after that. There was another boy after that. I think maybe it was in Ryan's class. I don't know. So we're tabling 17, is that what you're I'm asking for 17 to be tabled. Was there ever any donations prior to this by this gentleman? Yes. Prior to his conviction. And that was prior to his conviction? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Take care. Okay. Okay. All right, so we're back to items, where are we at? 16 through 25, with 17 being tabled and 21 being the budget vote. Is there any other questions or comments on those agenda items? I have a question on 19. Go ahead, Colleen. Did we see the long-range approval? I know we've talked about it in other meetings, but I don't remember 
seeing it ever. No, me neither. You have not seen it yet. Um, it is still in the works. Um, we have to have recommendations and things in just to get a draft um, for next week, and then it's on the next finance committee meeting, finance facility meeting for discussion. Could you tell us what the major amendment? Um, well, with? we had hired um, an architectural firm to do an entire the facility um, audit. So right now there's, I mean, it's I just printed it again. There's six pages of projects, and now we just have to evaluate which ones we actually want to put in the long range facility plan. So it's a complete amendment. It's not just a, you know, one item. Yeah. But this is what. Um, the finance committee had had wanted to do is to completely redo our long range facility plan. So that is underway. I don't have a great answer why um, time wise it had to go on tonight's agenda, but this is was the timeline that they had given us because they knew that we weren't going to have a report to give to you to vote on. So I I'm not sure. Sure. So they uh, so the engineers asked us to put this on. Yeah. Is the reality of it, but we don't actually. We just got the facilities report last week, week before we met with them. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're st it's still in the works, but this was the timeline, and then they have yeah. it being submitted sometime in May. I think because they wanted to submit it before the next board meeting, and that's why they were putting it on now. But we totally understood that yeah. you don't want to vote on something that you don't have in hand. Um, do they do they have to have our approval? To submit it? Is that what they're asking for? That's what I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 We will need ahead. approval to submit it. So they have, they're, they're not asking for us to vote on the major amendment. They're asking us to, to vote to submit the plan. Yes, that is true. Um, and then we would have another <coughs> vote to approve the plan. I just, I mean, if we had a project that we were trying to hurry up and get approval for, like for the summer, which we're, we're not, then I can see why this would be rushed. But yeah. I'm not sure what our timeline would be compressed for right now if, maybe just because they're trying to complete our request for our facility audit as quickly as possible and to get the long-range facility plan completed. Um, <coughs> Since we're adding the May 12th meeting, should we table this to the May 12th yeah. meeting? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. I think we should. I mean, okay. I, I would agree that. All right, so we're going to table number 19. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I am no on 16. I'm no on 16 as well. Any abstentions? Okay, thanks, Brian. <clears throat> so I have Zuppa, Stefan, and Smith as no's on 16. Did I miss anyone else? And Colleen. Colleen? I'm no on 16. Anybody else? Okay, thank okay. you. All right, next thing is continuing business. Um, two things. One, we've talked about the superintendent evaluation. I just want to know what it's due. I did go on. I was going to sure I I bring that up under new business, oh, but yeah, okay. we could bring it under continuing. I continue. just figured it's something we've talked about, and I don't <coughs> know what it's due. Yeah, we need to develop what our timeline is going to be. Everybody who can participate should have received the link to participate. Um, I'm assuming we're going to want to do something similar now. When you do it the way that we're doing it this year, which is different, it automatically kicks out the final product. Mm -hmm. We don't have to put the final product together. But we can sit down and talk about the final project and see if there's anything we want to emphasize. Um, it's due to you by June 30th, right? Correct. But we, you and I really need to sit down before that. So, so let's say June 15th. So we need to sit down. We should all get together by the 15th, by let's say June 1st. So maybe. Ideally, in the appropriate way to do it is on the May meeting, which is, I believe, the 26th the May meeting date, somewhere around there. You would have an executive session to discuss, and then you would approve the evaluation. You can you can approve it on the 30th of well, whenever we meet in June. I think it's the 30th of June. You could do that as well. All right, so we'll meet. We'll do an executive. Everybody needs to have it done then for an executive session meeting on. I would say they're going to need at least a few days, so right. a week before the 25th. What's our May 26th is the 
May 26th is the next meeting. Keep in mind that that executive session I am a part of. I waived it, my rights to it last year. I won't waive my rights to it this year. Okay, that's fine. So by May 19th, everybody who's going to participate in the superintendent evaluation needs to have it done. And it's a, you miss it, you lose. There's not going to be 15 emails reminding everybody what they got to do this year. The, the 19th, done, end of story. It'll be it's automatically submitted into the school boards. They'll compile all the things, and they'll send out a report, and we'll discuss it in the executive session on the 26th. Marianne, when did you say we were going to get that? You should have it now. You got an email probably 10 days ago? From Kathleen. Marianne, just as a reminder, I'm conflicted. You're conflicted. Danielle's conflicted, and Catherine's conflicted. Everybody else should be able to participate and I'm should not, have an email. I'm not conflicted. You are conflicted. You can talk to John after the meeting. That was an opinion. You have to seek a more so. It was an opinion. Conflict's, right, I'm not, not, conflict's I'm, not a same member of the union as Mr. Karuba, so I don't have a conflict. And I plan to evaluate Mr. Karuba fairly. I believe the opinion was the entire chain of command, which would lead up to Chris Karuba. But like I said, I'm not an attorney. You need to discuss it with our attorney at the end of the meeting. <coughs> I'll discuss it with my attorney. All right, so has everybody got that timeline? May 19th, done, and we'll, do, we'll have an executive session at the end of the meeting. I would plan that it's going to be a quite an extensive one. Do I go to that? You know, you won't no. be at the executive session. You don't have to plan for anything. <laughs> okay. Anything else under continuing business? I have one that I guess would be continuing business because we've been talking about all the graduations. Is there any plan on live streaming it? Yes. Okay. One hundred percent. Awesome. Both oh. of them. Yes. Okay. Can we do that for all of them, even the kindergarten ones? Uh, I think we can work it out for kindergarten. Because it's ten o'clock in the morning, so it's hard for some parents to get off. But it's always a problem. I think we can we work can on that. We can always do something like that. It'll be nice. Mm -hmm. I would like to add too, by the way, that we uh, we're putting a tent up next week so we can hold more outside activities. You know, that's a good example of one that we might do outside this year, rather okay. than trying to do it in the auditorium because we'll have the space and. A little bit less restrictive with the amount of people we can have. That's an idea. You know, National Honor Society is going to be another one. We're trying to, you know, um, try to keep as many of these end of the year activities as we can and get some outside, get them outside. Okay. I have just one more thing. It's, yep. it's in terms of our COVID protocol and, you know, we keep changing uh, with the CDC. So it's the same topic, but it was something today with, you know, fortunately we had another case and a bunch of children or students had to quarantine. Seeing that um, the situation happened, to my understanding, where students should have been masked six feet apart, why are all of them quarantined? Are we, are we, looking, are we looking to amend our policies? Like, is it guaranteed that that student was every, all it's not, we can't, we can't were, guarantee that they were in contact with every student. We can't guarantee that they were not in contact with every student. And that's where the county health department kind of guides us in that situation. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's got to be, what, 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. A lot of students, and it's a situation that was very controlled. So I, I had a feeling that that one wouldn't have led to as much quarantine as, say, a, a baseball team outbreak. I would understand that. Um, this situation, uh, uh, an academic sit-down kind of situation where I know the kids had, you know, should have had masks on, um, where I, they could not have been next, you know, six feet um, next to one another. I just don't, I know districts are kind of moving forward, and I don't know if we're moving in, in that direction. So it's just something to, something I thought about when we got that call today. Okay. Also, too, what about the number of days? I mean, doesn't the, the health department say 10 days with 15 days? They're still staying 14. <coughs> They're still staying 14. It'll go to 10 days when we go back down to yellow. I have one more question. 
see those badges already because I'm <laughs> going to say the big P word prom. Um, it's been said that there will be no dancing at the prom. However, there was something that came out from um, today that dancing with the governor is fine and CDC rules said it was okay. So just because I know that that's going to be the next issue, can, can you reiterate whether that is yes or no? Yeah, we, we just, we're following along the guidance. So as soon as the guidance well, changes, we do. It came out today. Okay. I read and, uh, it. You didn't want to finish. Thank you. <laughs> we actually have, um, we have a handout going out um, shortly. We were working on it this morning. So okay. it'll have all that good information. And one of the great lines we put in there, Ms. Williams, is subject, subject to change. Okay. Just wanted it out there. Anybody else? Okay, new business. I have one thing for new business. Anybody else have anything for new business? I have something for new business. I think we should congratulate the high school students on their play, how great it was. I'd like to thank all the parents, families, teachers, staff that were all involved. If you guys didn't see it, it was awesome. I was able to buy it and watch it at home. It was so good. Those kids deserve a round of applause for what they did in all time of COVID and the staff members that worked with them between the weather and the quarantines and the in and out of school, they put together one heck of a play and they did awesome. Thank you. Um, the only other thing I had was you guys had a meeting with town council and your, your liaison, are we gonna get minutes or a summation of that or something? We didn't actually appoint someone to take minutes at that meeting. Um, I could put a summary together. Okay, I think the rest of the board would like to know. Agreed. Anybody else have anything? We do need to approve the HIV findings. Oh, sorry, I didn't turn the page. Can I get a motion and a second to approve, to approve the HIV findings from the executive session? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, I guess that's it. Public participation for two. Oh yeah, sorry. It's in the wrong spot. <clears throat> um, this time in our meeting for the second public participation, does anybody in the audience have anything? No? <coughs> Michelle, did you get any emails? No. Okay, public participation is closed. Meeting adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Ready? Stop. No move. Second. Second. Second down there. Go home. <laughs>